and God help us. Hey guys, this is me, Pastor Tom Nook, and uh, yeah, it seems that I have to do another one of these Nook's Nifty Nitpicks episodes, this time on a film that came out around the same time of Transcendence that's actually not as good as Transcendence, which is saying a lot. <laughs> uh, Okay, so I went to go see Heaven is for Real, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not bad, it's not bad, it, it, it's pretty mediocre though, uh, like, it's a solid six, I would say, um, I have never read the book, I've read the tweets by Colton Burpo, which, uh, I, th I th actually think, despite having read the tweets, if I had never read the tweets at all, I probably would have still been terrified of the kid in this film, uh, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so this movie is, uh, this actually at least looked sane compared to God's Not Dead, which... For some reason, everyone in my school loves that movie. To, you know, to each their own, but still, it's propaganda film, plain and simple. It's it's an anti-atheist propaganda film. At least that's how I see it. Uh, uh, Heaven is for real is really boring. Like, uh, Greg Kinnear. I, I like Greg Kinnear as an actor. He's he, I liked him ever since I saw him in Robots as a kid. Um, and, you know, I, he actually had some pretty good acting skills in this film. Uh, and compared to everyone else, uh, I think he and the girl who had to play his daughter in the film were probably the best actress in the film. Like, uh... Like Margot Martindale uh, was meh, but 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 that many times she seemed to be like the villain of the film. At least that's my perspective. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church is pretty is pretty monotone, very just not really caring what project he's in. Um, that Kelly Riley person who plays Greg Kinnear's wife. Uh, at least one point, she let slip that she was British. <laughs> um, but I think the worst actor, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to be mean because I don't want to be mean to a little kid who's like four. But he wasn't that good of an actor. He was, he was terrifying to me. Um, like. Like, there's a scene where they're, like, in this car driving to Denver after, and, like, the funny thing is that they're only going to Denver for a very <laughs> purpose. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, like, the actual scene was like, let's go to Denver. Eh, I don't know, but if we go to Denver, kids are going to Denver. Like that kind of, huh? Okay, that's 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 nice. Uh, and so they're seeing this little live mine there, and I I kind of thought that was a very kind of funny. Like I thought it was kind of funny when the kid was saying, "Can we sing We Will Rock You?" <laughs> and it's just, and then the dad gives him like a weird look, but then they just start breaking the song, and then the most terrifying face showed up in the on the screen like. Like, it's a face, I haven't seen a face that terrifying since, like, L the Romeo plus Juliet, when Leonardo DiCaprio's, like, in his car hunting down Tybalt, and he's just like, <laughs> It was that kind of face, it's just like, it's like <laughs> He's like, has a T face, almost. Like, it's like, his face looks like a T, almost. <laughs> yeah, but it, it 
he's a kid, terrifying kid. Uh, I mean, like, he's probably a fine actor. I, he's probably a fine kid. But, he, he, throughout the whole movie, he just felt like one of the... I don't want to say one of the worst child actors, but one of the... Uh, because I've seen some bad child acting in films. I can't name it that off the top of my head. Uh, I don't know, maybe there's like fame probably had some bad teenage child actors. Uh, there's like... Uh, I, I wouldn't say like Taylor Mosman and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. That, that, those are probably some examples of bad at kid actors. The kid who like played Colton Verpo, eh, he, he's not too bad, but he could have been better. He, he could have been way better. Like, like a lot of his, like he's. I had to say like one sentence, and it sounded like he was saying three different sentences. It's like, oh great, the butterfly is going away. It's like, okay, William Shatner. <laughs> um, so the plot of the movie is that there's, well, actually, the plot of the movie doesn't kick in until about minute 30 of the film. So Greg, anyway, Greg Kinnear plays a pastor who does a lot of work. He's like in debt because, well, he does jobs and he never gets paid for them, which eh, I would actually expect him to get, which is probably why he's... Uh, eh, I, I can see why he would be so, like, giving, but still, when you're in debt, you're in debt. You probably need to, you probably need to start getting some money. Um, and, like, the, the entire first, like, couple scenes of the film, like, the first 20 to 30 minutes, it's completely irrelevant to the entire plot. Like, look okay, at Greg Kinnear. And breaks his knee during softball, which, eh. and then he starts passing kidney stones right after that, and then they go to Denver, and then Colton has a burst appendix, and the burst appendix is when the plot actually shows up in the film. Oh wait, there's the, <laughs> but it, it does, I think actually everything up to the burst appendix stuff was a fine film, uh, like, it was a... Like, it had no plot of, it was a no plot of film, but it was still pretty interesting. Like, you got to, like, I, okay, there's this quote that I love in the film, like, beginning, like, when there's, like, how hey, about we order a pizza tonight, boys night out. And, uh, and it's fine, but that, he also says he needs to go to the hospital for a little bit, so, and then Colt's like, no, I want to go too. All right, hospital and pizza, hospital and pizza. I'm just like. There's something entirely wrong with that statement. <laughs> hospital and pizza. And it's like, when they're at the hospital, it's like Greg Kinnear counseling a dying man. <laughs> so I'm only imagining, it's like, oh, do you have any regrets? Let's go get some pizza. It's just like, what? <laughs> well, it seems like a lewd fam, a very strange lewd family almost of, with a pasture for a father. Since they're sorry about very sensual scenes between Greg Kinnear and Kelly Riley. <sighs> yeah. It, it. I used to also mention, like, since I always like to mention the directors, like, randomly in a sense. I actually, this is the second day in a row that I've had to watch a Randall Wallace film. <laughs> like, yesterday. I finished watching We Were Soldiers in my World Civ class, and uh, that was directed by Randall Walls, and it shows, and I could tell that was from the director of We Were Soldiers while watching Heaven is For Real. No, <laughs> Heaven is Totes Real, yo. Uh, haha. <laughs> yeah. Nobody gets why I'm saying Heaven is Totes Real, yo. Now, actually, when I, I've... Anytime I mention Heaven is for Real at school today, uh, I always refer to it as Heaven is Toad's Real, yo. And nobody questions it. <laughs> Which is pretty nice. 
Um, I didn't know. I, I thought I was the only person who watched Brad Jones videos in my school. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was watching We Were Soldiers yesterday. And so, yeah, I could tell it was a Randall Wallace film because it felt very Christian and very patriotic. Like, it was set in Nebraska, and it, it had, like, scenes, uh, like, cinematography scenes of, like, fields and just the sky and the fields it felt like that sort of film it was and i would i won't say this film was as gory actually it, it was kind of gory at like the point where greg kinnear breaks his knee you actually kind of see a shot of the broken knee and that's kind of and you could kind of see a little bit of the bone not as much bone as you can see when Cal Penn breaks his arm in epic movie, but still, eh, 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 it was, but still wasn't as gory as we were soldiers. So anyway, back to the plot. Uh, so burst appendix for Colton, and apparently he has a near death experience. I actually wasn't really clear if he had near death experience or not. Which is weird, and uh, and so he sur he manages to survive. And the first thing he wants, like right after, is like, I want to pet the spider. And no, I want to hold the spider. And it, this kid says the weirdest things in reaction to anything. Like I know that he's an innocent little boy, but still, he like when he's. We actually do get to see heaven in this movie. You know what? The worst part of this film was the heaven scenes. Like, that could have... I, I really don't think that should have been in the film. Like, at all. We... If we didn't know what heaven looked like, if we just were told it instead of having to see it, it would have been a perfectly fine, like, explanation of things. But we have... I don't really think we should see it, like, especially with the stupid things the kid says in it, like, he goes into this church, and, like, in front of him are all these angels, like, a sky opening up, and he's sitting in a pew watching all these angels sing to him, and the first thing he says is, like, can you guys sing We Will Rock You? And to which I'm like, what? Well, uh, I guess, <laughs> that, that, I guess that would be something you'd say, since he's the same kid who said, I like to play football in Minecraft, and I've met Christ. <laughs> no, seriously, guys, I, I recommend that you look up this kid's Twitter account. You will, you will be amazed at the incredibly, the, the incredibly weird things he says. I, it's not like, like me just bashing the kid for always mentioning Christ in his, like, email in his like twitter account in his tweets uh it's just that they're always worded like it's a serial killer like uh, i i'm sorry i need to look something up uh, okay i'm gonna look up this good like because of what i've seen i'm always ready to die and it's like i have met god and greg kinnear <laughs> oh boy yeah, yeah, I could see him being God. Oh, let's see. I knew karate in heaven. Oh, boy. Heaven is every extinct animal. Well, that's nice. Uh, let's see. In heaven, anyone can dunk. What's your dunkaroo? Alright. True. Wait. Let me see. In heaven, if you take a slice of pizza, it grows back. Wait, no, I actually tweeted something on... Well, actually, no, I can't say. Uh, that's a whole secret. Uh, since I came back, Dad stares right through me. What? Um, there's no way you can understand what it feels like to be there at his side and then be cast out. Okay? If you don't think heaven is for real, then I pity you. Alright. In heaven's... You can shoot guns at each other for fun. 
No, seriously, this is what he wrote. Alright, okay, you can't see it because of the terrible light on here, but it says something like, actually, let me enlarge this. Okay. Nah. Okay, you can't see it. Hey, you can't see it, but whatever. It's seriously. It happens you can shoot guns at each other for fun. That's, that's nice. Only three pe other people could know how I feel Adam, Eve, and beautiful, troubled Lucifer. No, no, no. <laughs> Even at the end of the movie, it says Colton Burpo is now a normal teenager. And I'm like, look on this kid's Twitter account. He's a normal teenager, alright. Actually, when I told my mom that, because I went to go see this with my mom, of course. And, uh, and she even said, well, that's kind of an oxymoron, more normal teenager, which I have to agree because there's a lot of people who annoy me today. Today's been a bad day. <sighs> annoying kids at school. Annoying kids at school. Uh, uh, so anyway, Colton goes to heaven apparently, we see heaven, which is the, you know, it, that could have been all cut out, I, I really think it could have been cut out, it, it just was not needed, and it just, it didn't feel, it felt really out of place, and, uh, so, there are people who doubt him, there's people who don't doubt him, there's people who want to believe, like Greg Kinnear, and, uh, and even says something like, no, he has bluish greenish eyes. Jesus has bluish greenish eyes. And, uh, like, he even recognizes the, uh, the grandfather of Greg Kinnear. And by, by picture that's e of him being young, he says, everyone is young in heaven. Which raises a lot of questions. Like, how young? Like, do you have to be, like, half? your age when you died like the middle of your like age span like if you died when you were like 16 would you be eight there i mean like i know there's the miscarried baby oh but oh that that scene uh that was not a fun scene like like did you know i had two sis like did you know i had a sister well, of course you have cassie I didn't know I had a sister. Didn't know I have Cassie. No, I didn't know I have two sisters. I had the one that died in your tummy. I'm just like, that's not something normal you say, kid. Like, I know it's an innocent. I know it's an innocent four-year-old, but still, that's not what a four-year-old says. That's that's just like, it's an innocent four-year-old. No, it's it's way too, it's it's way too creepy for a four-year-old. <sighs> And so there's a big sermon at the end with Greg Kinnear, not saying he is heaven real, but is heaven for real? He he heaven is totes real, y'all. It's totes real, y'all. <laughs> Nobody gets what I'm saying. Uh, and then the film ends. Randall Walls, directed by Randall Walls. Uh, it's a, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna talk about the previews in a second, let me just take a break. Okay, so the trailers that I got before Heaven is for Real, um, were actually really unfitting with Heaven is for Real, like I got, uh, like the trailer for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I'm, I'm still probably gonna go see because I like the first movie, but from what I've heard, it's gonna be the next. It, it's gonna be to the Amazing Spider-Man reboot series what Spider-Man Three was to the original Spider-Man series. Even the the fact that it has three villains. Um, and I got the Maleficent trailer, in for, which I already talked about in my last review. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's weird that I get a Maleficent trailer in front of a religious film. So that's. That's pretty nice. Witchcraft in front of a religious film. You know, I, I should probably explain. I think this film, like, for a Christian market, will probably work. Like, 
like the people who liked God's Not Dead at my school, uh, they'll probably like it. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people like that. There's like, there's no youth groups at my school, but there's, there's a, there's a lot of devouts. Let's just put it that way. Um, I think that the movie, it, it. I'm not, I'm a Christian, okay? I'm a Catholic person myself, uh, I would say I'm not very religious though, like, I, I refer to myself as, as an agnostic Christian, like, ag an oxymoron, I know, but agnostic Christian is how I could describe it. My dad calls it cafeteria Catholic, which also makes sense. Um, like, I pick and choose what, what I want to believe in. That's actually pretty true. Like, I, I do believe that there was a Christ. I do believe that there is a God. I mean, like, there might not be a God, but I'm gonna choose the side that it has the God. And, uh, like, I, I believe that there are, there were miracles back in the day. It's just that somehow we've degenerated as a society and we haven't had that Noah or that Moses to save us. Yeah, we really do need a Moses or a Noah to come and just bring us righteousness, because my society is just completely messed up right now. Bad day. Or, no, better yet, let's just get Anthony Hopkins from Noah just looking for berries and using his fire sword to completely destroy us. <laughs> oh, by the way, according to Colton Burpo, God has a fire sword. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, you just, you really need to check out that kid's Twitter account, just, I know, I'm not trying to offend Christians, but still, you'll probably have a laugh, too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, do I recommend this movie? Uh, I don't know, it's not offensive, like, the film didn't offend me in any way, it was, it was a wholesome movie. Uh, there were some parts that were really cheesy, like, at the end, and, like, this was the one of the most groan-worthy scenes, like, where, like, Margot Marndale lost his son in the war, and at the end of the movie, like, when, when they're all giving a group hug to Greg Kinnear for making a sermon, like, for, out of the blue, Colton sees the heavens, like, above the sun pedestal in the church, and then they disappear. See, he does see things. Mm. Then Margo Marindale just randomly sees her, the ghost of her dead son, which didn't make any sense. Like, she didn't go to heaven. She didn't have a near-death experience. She didn't... It, why did she see this? It made no sense. Like, it, it, it took me out of the movie entirely. Uh, so, I don't really, like... I, like, the film's opening was weird, like, I expected a trailer because it, like, it had one of those, like, PG ratings that you, that you see on DVDs, but I'd never seen them in front of a movie. Like, I don't know if it's just because it's half just for real, or Toad's real. <laughs> it's worn off of me. Uh, but, I don't know. And then it showed the Sony logo, which, if... And then they moved into it, and then they showed the TriStar logo, which just felt really pointless. And also, I know, speaking of pointless, like, the first thing you see is the title heaven is for real. And then they say, based on a true story, like, that was the part where I felt, am I going to see the trailer for the be for this movie right before I see the movie? Like, who puts based on a true story in front of a movie? Like, I remember, like, if it, it could happen to you the Nicolas Cage film where he wins the lottery and shares his winnings, like, like, there's the narrator who says that this film is mostly true. Then, that was fine, but you don't put the title and then just change, like, based on a true story. You don't do that at the right, at right at the beginning of your film, okay? It, uh, oh, sorry, play with cards. Um, actually, I think that actually happened at the beginning. We were soldiers too. Like, okay, yeah, I know it's I I know it's based on a book, 
It's probably based on true story. You don't need to tell us that. So, do I recommend this film? Um, I don't, know. I, I don't really know. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not really much of a religious person, but I mean, I would say like compared to something like God's Not Dead, uh, I think this would be the more satisfying film. Like, I haven't seen God's Not Dead yet. I don't plan on it unless I'm like really in the mood to watch probably yeah. like if i finish watching rockets your decision i just want to watch a mainstream propaganda film i'll get to that uh keep your opinions in your pocket um i would say that greg Kinnear is probably the best part of this film um like it didn't really i don't know if heaven is totes real but it could be, as I said, I'm an agnostic Christian. I, I, I take the side of the Christians, but I, I really don't know. Which respect called it here. Um, it, it was a, uh, it was a bland movie. It was very mediocre, but it's not offensive. You'll, you'll probably like it regardless. Like, like every scene kind of felt religious in a way. Which is a Christian film. It's not very surprising. Hmm. Yeah. So, it was a... Yeah. It wasn't a mildly amusing film. Like, I laughed at parts that I needed to laugh at. It was... It was fine. It was... It was a... Like, it wasn't too much of a waste of my time. Like, I went to go see a film. It's pretty fine for me. I just don't get to make videos to hold you guys over while I'm still waiting in my power cord. Huh. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I give this about a 6. Uh, and I give We Were Soldiers a 7, if you guys are wondering. So, yeah, I didn't go, to, I didn't get, go see the other woman. I didn't really want to. It looked... Uh, I don't know. Like, I even posted on Facebook, like, I don't know what film to see, like, The Other Woman or Heaven is Totes Relio. Um, like, I got one response saying, I like, they both look good. I got another response from uh, a person who is terrified, who somehow responded to it, but is terrified of me in real life. <laughs> Just watch, I'm gonna... I'm gonna start reading just Colton. I'm gonna start reading Colton Burpo's tweets to him and never say it's from Colton Burpo. And just like, that's all I'm ever gonna say to him. Uh, uh, and he's the person who requested I go see this movie, so. <laughs> and I think there was only one person who told me go see the other women. So I didn't really know what to pick. Like, I had ties, so I'm just like, what's the closest film in town? I don't really want to see Rio 2, so I'm just going to go see if it is for real. And, you know, it was not a very expensive film. To, I think tickets cost like $15, and like popcorn cost like, I don't know, like $10. It was an it was expensive film, just for 99 minutes of my time. It, it didn't accomplish as much. Like, the girl who lived through time accomplished more in 99 minutes than this film, but whatever. That's just because it's my favorite film of all time. So, uh, yeah, go see, uh, Heaven is Toast Real, yo. Uh, I'll be back next week with my review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yay, Paul G. Mani. Or Paul G. Minotti, whatever you choose. Alright, see you guys soon.